record after that first impressive home loss to the newest Mr. Salmon Bellies in our first telecast this year. With me tonight is Lance Goshko. The, I'd like to congratulate him on being the uh, newest sports editor in the Richmond area, the Richmond Times Weekly. Well, I appreciate that, Dan. Uh, it's kind of exciting coming into Richmond and uh, doing the telecast and also doing uh, the writing for uh, teams such as the Outlaws. They're a good-looking team this year. Um, they've been in all their games really close. Uh, they just seem to have a couple of problems with keeping their concentration during the game. But I think you'll see them improve. Yeah, from what I understand, uh, the comments we were making in the first game is that Dallas Eliak has been playing well. It's just, I mean, the games have been low scoring from what I understand. Well, he had an uh, injury problem at first there, and uh, but we look for a big game out of him tonight. The referee tonight is Don Leach. He's the only one here so far. They had some problems with the referees, and hopefully we'll have a uh, help perform later on. But he's on his own right now. Quitlam coming up with the ball. That's number 18, John Hedlund fighting for the ball. A bit of interference there on Bruce Davidson of the Outlaws, and the Outlaws come up with it. That's Russ Hurd controlling the ball. Across the floor to number four, Troy Pelzer. Looking up floor, that's team captain John Swan with the ball. You can pick him out with his new face mask that he's wearing now. 16 in the corner is Brian Jeriga in behind the net. Can't see quite who that is yet. Shot there, wide of the net by John Swan. Ball runs loose, there's eight seconds left on the 30 second clock. Russ Hurd taking a look now, trying to set something up. They're running quickly at a time, being watched there by number 13, Rob Dalzell, who knocks the ball loose and it goes over to Coquitlam. We had a good start to the game here, it's a hell of a tempo. I tell you, there's uh, one thing about this game tonight, is both teams are evenly matched, and I think you'll see it as the game goes along. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people who are going to take that 1-4 and four record and uh, take it the wrong way. This is a very tight Western Lacrosse Association league. It always has been. And you'll see it uh, as the year goes, uh, you know, even get tighter uh, defensively anyway. Coming up there, number 21, Mike really takes a shot, saved by Eliak. The Nets come off its post. I think possession's going to be retained by Coquitlam on the play. I guess That's Quitlin's team captain, Mike Reilly, with the ball in the corner there. I guess Dallas has learned something a little from uh, Quinlan there from New West and his uh, maneuvers with the goalpost. Yeah. They're just uh, shutting the 30-second clock down a bit. It reset there, and it uh, shouldn't have. There wasn't a shot on goal, and Quitlin's got 10 seconds left on the 30-second clock now. Watching there is number four, Troy Pelzer. Shot there by Hamilton, wide of the net. The ball is running down the floor, picked up there by number 19, Paul Warner. He's running out of time, and they do. They the ball goes over on the 30-second possession. Because he's Swanee, he almost made a smart play there when he almost got loose with the ball on the rebound. That's Steve Downey with the ball. Passing it back out top now to Dale Robertson. That's Brad Henry out for his first touch of the ball so far. Nice try to shot there by Downey, but the ball went wide, and he was called for in the crease. Downey's been playing well so far this year. He's had himself a uh, few points. In the first couple of starts, I believe he had 10 points. Yeah, he's, he had a good game, I think, with five-point night that first night we did there at the uh, home opener. He looked good. Here's Kirk Suzuki with the ball for Quitlamo. A little bit of a high stick got in the way there, saved by Idiak. Suzuki coming up with a loose ball again. A little bit of good hustle there in the corner by Kirk. Shot there, saved. And the net comes up again. Dallas has got a wandering shoulder tonight. Well, why not use it? I mean, you can get away with it in this league, so. And there's only one referee controlling it so far. So you can get away with a few things. Richmond bringing the ball up. That's Stu Watson passing it up. Brad Henry again with the ball. To the left of Quitlam's goalkeeper. That's number 30, Bill Thomas, in goal for them. Henry passing it across. Can't see who that is. Oh, nice shot there. Pick the bottom corner on Thomas. I still haven't seen who. I think that's uh, I think number 18, Mike Gillis, isn't it? I think it's big Mike Gillis out there getting himself the goal. Oh, I heard a few fans of the Mike Gillis fan club uh, going at it again. I hear they've been really getting themselves going this year for him. Well, they got kind of um, dejected with Mike not uh, putting any goals in. And frankly, I was too. But no, I see something different tonight. I might jump right back on that bandwagon. Well, that goal comes with two minutes and 20, no, two minutes and 16 seconds gone in the first period. 18, Mike Gillies, assist to number 12, Brad Henry, and number three, Dale Robertson. Time of the goal, two minutes, 16 seconds into the first period. Ball running loose there, that's number 25 for Quitlam, Troy Gurney trying to pick it up, being watched there by three outlaws, and up comes the ball with Brad Henry. Steve Downey winding up right in the uh, midst of the belly pad there on Thomas. He had a good notion about that. Why not try it? Bringing the ball up. That's John Hedlund with the ball. Being watched there by number three, Dale Robertson. 
Pass it across, number 13, Rob Dalzell, with his first touch of the ball. Nice save there by Dallas Elia. You see uh, Dallas, if he can, uh, like I said in the first game there, if he can get uh, hot early, he'll be a tough goaltender. Keith Callison with his first touch of the ball this evening. In the corner to Darcy Phillips. In behind the net, that's Dan Lamond with the ball. Back out. That was Callison with it again. Back over to number 20, Derek Milani. His first touch of the ball. Four seconds left on the 30-second clock. All of a sudden it reset. There must have been a shot on goal there. I didn't see it. We got a bit of a... The referee's taking a bit of flack from the Coquitlam bench. I think he must have signaled the 30-second clock because he didn't blow it down. The headland was uh, giving him something there. Gurney passes it across to number 18, Headland. Sorry, that's number 19. Mike Launer with the ball. Back in the corner. To number four, Nadazi. Nadazdi, I guess his name is. Didn't check on some of these names before the game. I'm paying for it now. <laughs> Nadazdi with a shot, saved there by Iliuk. Turn away, Jody Twa comes up with the ball for Quitlam. He's another one of the Richmond Connection. Played for the Richmond Roadrunners out here. Uh, I think Jody wants to have a good game tonight. He was uh, benched in their last game for the third period. So uh, Jody, when he gets uh, inspired, he can play some good lacrosse. Team captain Mike really bringing it up. There's 12 seconds left on the 30-second clock. Going to make a move for the net. Dallas Elia takes the ball for Richmond. I see we've got a second cameraman now. We're going to get two perspectives on the play now. John Swan with the ball. That's Russ Hurd now with it in the corner to the right of Thomas. Trying to pick the ball up there with Troy Pelzer and it's loose again. Swan comes up with it. Loose ball, good fighting there by, oh, the helmet comes off at number 19, Mike Launer. A lot of these guys don't put their chin straps on, of course, so the uh, helms can come off pretty easily out here. Jeriga looking for a shot. He's running out of time, though, and he is out of time. Ball goes over to Coquitlam on the Richmond, possession. Richmond looks uh, patient tonight, but here they got caught. Oh, bottom corner on Dallas Eliak there. The goal by number nine, Bobby Klein. Another Richmond connection for the Coquitlam Adnax. They didn't make the transition quick enough there for Richmond, but uh, as I was just saying a little earlier on their offense uh, maneuvers, they, uh, they're, they're taking their time and they're trying to set up the right shot. Scored by number nine, Bob Klein. Assist to number 21, Mike Reilly. Time of the goal, 5-0-3. Well, that makes the score one all. Bobby Klein with his first goal against the Richmond Outlaws this year. The assist going to Mike Reilly on a quick pass and caught Richmond napping, I think, a bit, a bit there on the changeover possession. Well, it's whoever gets that break in this game, and I think that's the way it's going to work. They're going to close all the way, I think. Chris Cowley passes it off to Ray Richards, wearing number 15 for the Adnax. Klein again getting a touch of the ball. Cowley with a shot. Just went wide of the net. Jeriga comes up with it for the Outlaws. A nice slosh there. It was right down on his arm, caused him to lose the ball. Interference called on the Adnax. Ball thrown into the corner, but no uh, penalty given this year. They're supposed to be uh, supposedly clamping down a bit on the th balls thrown away from the players this year. Well, I think the referee's got himself uh, a lot to handle right now, and uh, if the other fella shows up, maybe we'll see something like that get called tonight. Of course, Don Leach, the referee this evening, and he uh, was one of the first officials to start wearing helmets in the WLA and in all senior lacrosse this year. It's not a mandatory piece of equipment for lacrosse. Save there by Bill Thomas. Coming up with it, just in it, stuck between his legs there. He reaching out beside the net so he didn't drop it into the net. Well, I'd like to see, um, I'd like to see Richmond get a few more shots. Uh, like I say, they're patient uh, with the shots they are getting right now, but uh, maybe a few more uh, howitzers from the point. That's Jody Twa in the corner. Back behind the net to Chris Cowie. Oh, sorry, that's number 20, Paula Brunero. Making a lot of fakes, trying to pass it off. Does so, and shot there, saved by Iliak. Coming up with the ball, that's 21. Stu Watson passes it across to Downey. Downey being watched closely, gets the shot off behind the back. A nice shot from where he was at at the time, but uh, ball goes over to Coquitlam on the save by Thomas. A la Jerry Pinder on that move. Oh, shot saved by Iliak. Oh, but the ball falls backwards off of him into the net. A bit of a fluke goal. I didn't see if it was knocked in by one of the outlaws or not. Well, they got a little lucky there, and I think, like I say earlier, you're going to have a situation here where a little bit of luck might give you the win. I know uh, Brunero out there. He's uh, got this stick moving around fancy. Like, he's their main man, I think, right now with the loss of uh, Prentice and Manning, two injuries. 
um, and of course the retirement of Taskers. Of course, uh, except with the exception of Brian Tasker, who's now Second in Richmond. Scored by number five, Jeff Eater. Assist to number 20, Paulo Brunoro. And number 25, Troy Gurney. Time of the goal, 6.48. The ball went out of play there on Alpha the faceoff, so Richmond comes up with the ball. Shot there by number 13, Don McNeil, saved easily by Thomas. Ball running loose, picked up by number four for Philip Mark Nasadzi. Nadasti, I'll get that right, Chet. Being watched there by Keith Callison. Don Hamilton with the ball. Sorry, that's Ray Hamilton, Don's brother. Looking for a shot, being watched there by Callison, saved by Iliak. In for the rebound, really. Passes back out, Nadasti takes the shot, saved by Iliak. Crease, crease play called on the Quitlam Admax. Quitlam's playing well tonight, you know. They've had their struggles this year, and tonight they're coming on. They look like, they look like they're ready, and they don't want to let this outlaw team get ahead of them. McNeil over to Callison. Back out top to McNeil. We're playing even strength just over seven minutes into the game. Callison with a weak shot went by the net. Thomas comes up with the scores. Quitlam Admax 2, Richmond Outlaws 1. You're on Richmond Cable 10 here, the Richmond Outlaws. Lacrosse action. And Quitlam has just been called for too many men on the play, I believe. It looks like uh, the one fell, I think it was number nine there, um, Bob Klein. He came out a little early while they're uh, trying to make a little quick break for the offensive zone. Yeah, that's the call. Too many men on the floor for the Quitlam Adnax, so they'll be playing shorthanded for the next two minutes. Well, let's see if Richmond can get themselves even with them here. And they might be able to. I see, as usual, John Swan is out there for the faceoff. Well, he's the main man on their penalty uh, or on their power play, so they're going to either score or die with them. Yeah, I see that uh, in the game, the Outlaws' only win so far this year was against these Coquitlam Adnax a couple of Saturdays ago in Coquitlam. And in that game, John Swan was even on faceoffs, I believe, winning seven and losing seven. So he, he, was, he won the most faceoffs for the Outlaws, so he's a good man to see out there on the floor. Well, with Iliak, um, you'd have to say the other man who's going to uh, lead this team sure is Swanee, and he's done a pretty good job so far. The only problem with that faceoff figure is that he faced off against Mike Greeley, who had 15 faceoffs out of the 24 that he took in Coquitlam, so uh, he's a tough man to go against. The Adnax still with the ball. It's now loose in the corner to the right of Dallas Iliak. Picked up there by Jeriga. Richmond changing and putting their power play onto the floor. That's number 14, Lamont, the first one off the bench, along with Hurd, Henry, Callison, and John Swan stays on the floor. That's a new addition to the power play, different from the last game we saw. Well, he's proven in the past that he can uh, play under pressure, and he's doing it tonight. The ball goes loose there. Brad Henry couldn't get the handle on the ball, and it goes right to Thomas. Passes it off to Reilly. And now across the line is Brunero. Of course, they have to get it across the second line there. That's their 10-second line when they're shorthanded. Brunero with a shot, top corner. That was easy. A little slow moving over on that one, I think, but he was trying to guess him. Well, Richmond's a little unfortunate on that play because Downey uh, he, uh, broke the stick there on that one, and Brunero made no mistake, as usual. With the shorthanded goal for the Quitlam Adnax at 8.36 of the first period. Makes it Quitlam 3, Richmond Outlaws 1. Referee Don Leach over at the time. Here's Brock getting things changed out. Number 20, Paulo Brunoro. Assist to number 21, Mike Reilly. And the goalie, number 30, Bill Thomas. Well, that was a shot in the arm for the Adnax, playing shorthanded and getting picking up a goal off there. We'll have to see the Outlaws set things up a little better this time. Well, they're getting, uh, Coquitlam's getting the breaks right now, and uh, Richmond's having a few troubles, but uh, you'll see them come around. Shot wide of the net there by Dan Lamond. Knocked the Canadian flag loose up, up top there. It uh, was straight just a moment ago, but I see half of it sort of started to fall down. Could be some trouble here later on. John Swan intercepting for the Outlaws, bringing it back up the floor with 34 seconds left in the Quitlam penalty. Shot being taken there by Callison, interfered with afterwards, but a nice save by Bill Thomas as Callison tried for the upper right-hand corner. It's a nice design little play there. They caught uh, Coquitlam napping and tried taking advantage of it and didn't just quite work out for him, though. That's Lamont controlling the ball from Henry. Back out top to Swan. Ball goes loose. Hurd picks it up. Being watched there by number 18. That's uh, Headland again. Get these names straight up. Well, a handball there by Richmond. The ball's going to go over to Coquitlam on possession, and they're going to kill off the rest of their uh, penalty here. The clock's still running. It, it ran down the next three or four seconds, so that'll definitely help. Well, and like I say, they're getting the breaks. 
Things Bernero. are working out for him. Bernero trying to bring it up, but he's not going to have to worry about it because Quitlin's now back at full strength. Jody Twa back to Bernero. Hit there by Mikey Gillis, and the ball goes over to Coquitlam. I see Twa wearing a specially designed helmet. And Bernero wide of the net. Twa going after the rebound. But his own player there, Gurney, knocked it away before he had a chance to. Here, a chance for a breakaway here. This is Greg Jensen with his first touch of the ball. Dalzell catches him from behind and checks him. Stick right over top and knocks the ball out of his stick. A nice check there by Dalzell. Good hustle back from Todd Greg coming in. And wow. uh, taking and looking to uh, get a shot off there, being watched by Robertson. Didn't see who the shot was there. I think it was Adair for the, with the shot for Quitlam, but saved easily by Iliak. Coming back up quickly is Troy Pelzer. He's on a two-on-one along with Stu Watson. Over to Watson's shot. It looked nice. Thought it went in, but uh, the red light didn't come on. Well, you saw the net move just slightly, but obviously it must have just charged it up. Unfortunately, we don't have our instant replay machine going tonight, so we don't get a second look at that, but uh, it was awfully close anyways. Score is still Coquitlam 3, Richmond 1, with 9, nine minutes and 16 seconds left in the first period. Again, the, with the ball, that's Gurney being watched there by Richmond players. Oh, a little, little flip shot into the top right-hand corner past Elia. Caught him napping a bit on the play there. Beautiful goal by Gurney. He uh, came in. He actually knew exactly what he wanted to do with that. Probably the nicest goal I've seen this year so far. I uh, see that um, Coquitlam is, uh, like I said, they're getting all the breaks, and Richmond's going to get frustrated in a bit here if they don't uh, try to stop some of these things happening. I think the Richmond defenders are going to have to tighten up a bit. Definitely. Troy Gurney, assist to number 21, Mike Reilly, and number four, Mark Nadasdi. Time of the goal, 10 minutes, 51 seconds. Well, Gurney with his first goal of the game there, that's the third assist for team captain Mike Reilly, and he's having a heck of a first period already. He's playing well, and he's showing some good quickness out there. Callison with the ball. The Outlaws are going to have to get something going here quickly in the first period. They're falling behind. That's number 14, Dan Lamont of the ball being watched there and slashed a bit by Mark Nadasti. I'll get that yet. <laughs> it's like saying Angelusi. There's, there's a name for Don Whitman to use in his uh, NHL scrapbook. Don, I think, satisfied with doing this lotto nowadays. The faceoff to the right of Quentin goalkeeper Bill Thomas. Uh, eight minutes and 44 seconds left in the first period now. Thomas has played himself a good little game so far, and he's, uh, but then he had not faced that many shots. In for the faceoff for Coquitlam with number 22, Mike Reilly facing John Swan. And the ball goes over to Coquitlam. No, taking the faceoff with Dan Lamont for the Outlaws. Dobre bringing it up, crossing over with his line mate, number eight, Dorman. Takes the ball in behind the net. Back out top to Cowie. Cowie watching for some picks across there. Nothing much coming around, so he throws it loose into the corner. Picked up by Suzuki. Being watched there by number seven. Well, it can't be number seven. It's number two, Darcy Phillips. Shot wide of the net. Red light flickered on there, but there was no way it was even on the net. Dobre picked up a new 30 off there. Must have gone off the goalkeeper, so Quitland's got some more time to work the ball around. Dorman now. Being watched there by Callison. In behind the net to Bobby Klein. Suzuki running around the net. Slips as he's going around the back, and... Uh, Dallas they hammers his stick down the ground, grabs the ball away from him. You'll notice right now, Coquitlam's, all the players are moving around and they're trying to get into position, and then uh, the Elas come down the other side and they stand around. They're going to have to start moving a bit. Well, that was the problem in the last goal there when uh, when Gurney ran right through the players. He ran right by four guys and they just waved their sticks at them. So maybe the Richmond players had a little too much sun today. It was a beautiful day today, that's for sure. The ball there, Robertson loses it. He's looking for it. He finally finds it. And he's got three seconds on the 30. He's going to throw a wild. This ball goes over to Quilton Cowley with it now. Play oh, yeah. continues. No whistle by the referee. You never know. You might get a lucky balance there. Quilton changing on the fly. Bringing it up is Dalzell. Wiley veteran, as you would say. Is the, uh... <laughs> I got to stop using that blind tonight. Gurney takes the shot. Easily turned aside by Eliak. Just under seven minutes remaining in the first period. A little bit of, a little bit of holding there by Hedlund, but he gets away with it. His play continues on, and Thomas comes up with the ball. I don't think Mike was too happy about it. And yeah. I was, Mike, I think I might get a little upset at that yeah. fella. Mike took a little uh, look back towards the referee, but didn't get any sympathy. Uh, Mike, Mike ought to do things for himself. 
Probably not too happy they had an extra man on the floor. Yeah, unfortunately Don Leach is on his own, so he couldn't see that one, but he didn't come out far, that far into play anyways, so I don't think it really made, made that much of an impact. Thomas looking, he's got five seconds on the 30. He's going to throw it, just loops it up there. Not a very good play at all. He should have thrown it right down by the net. Adair throws it down into the corner. Of course, he's, uh, they're going to get away with that and stall for a little bit extra time so they can make full change. Up with the ball now. That's number 19, Bruce Davidson with the ball. Passes in the corner, Jeriga. Being watched there by number two, Ray Hamilton, who's laying a bit of wood on him. Uh, Swan tried for a shot there before he got the ball on his stick, and it just sort of uh, kept right on going into goalkeeper Bill Thomas. I see Davidson making his, I think it's his debut for Richmond here, coming from the Berards. Save there by Thomas, off the shot by Davidson. I think Davidson might fit in well with this team, you know. He played with Swanee in uh, Vancouver, and they worked well together there last year, so maybe he can uh, get things going for himself tonight, or tonight and the rest of the season. It's Bobby Klein in the corner being watched there by... Russ Hurd followed through a bit on the shot and Hurd took a little swing at him afterwards just to, uh, they're just greeting each other for the... Uh, well, Russ had his glove up and around his chin and was tickling him there, I guess. Nice save there by Thomas. Tried for a low shot there, Bruce Davidson, but just couldn't put it between the legs or buy him on the short side. See, Davidson's hustling right now and he's not looking too bad in an outlaw uniform. Suzuki across to Dalzell trying to make a move. Russ Hurd gets his stick tied up there and couldn't quite get a good shot off. Looks like Richmond's getting a little bit more into this game now. You know, like I said, they come out real slow. They seem to be picking the pace up just a bit. I think Madison will still have some words for him in the intermission. I don't think I'd want to be near the Outlaws uh, dressing in this first intermission. Hopefully they can still get something out of the last five minutes of the first period here. That's uh, Lamont with the shot. Went wide of the net. Callison taking another shot wide of the net. they got to put those on the net. Uh, they got a reset there on the 30 anyways, but it didn't make much difference. You got to get the ball on the net there. No, I at least get it on his belly. And I won't say salmon belly tonight. That's Jody Twa with the ball. Passes it up to number 20, Paulo, Paulo Bernero. Across, that's Dalzell again with the familiar number 13 on his back. And away comes Keith Callison with the ball. Bring it up the right side slowly. Passes it up to Danny Lamond. Oh, he just hangs the stick out and gets it knocked away momentarily by Bernero. These little things are all adding up for the Olas. they got to show a little bit more discipline out there. Thrown away blindly there also by number two, Darcy Phillips. I think they're going to have to watch out for Bernero tonight. You know, in 20 games last year, he had 57 points, including 30 goals. So he's the man out there in Coquitlam's side of it. Ball goes over to Coquitlam on the 32nd clock the expiration of the 30-second clock, and picking it up there is Gurney. Passes it off as he goes off the floor. That's number four, Mark Nadasdi with it. Here's watch put the move around in there tonight. They're setting up the, you know, double picks, and then they have one-on-one -on -one confrontation that's working out for him. Ball knocked away by Danny Lamond and picked up in the corner there by number 19, Mark Lawner. Really out top, nine seconds on the 30, saved easily by Elia. Richmond changing on the fly. Lamon takes it while they're changing and passes it off to number three, Dale Robertson. I think Richmond should just try to get out of this period and go back in the dressing room and just think things out. On the other hand, they should try and see if they can put one or two in and uh, maybe get a little bit of momentum for the second period. Pass That's back out there. Robertson couldn't quite pick it up. Well, things aren't clicking so far for him. A lot of loose balls going away from the Outlaws. That's Downey taking a shot from way out, and it goes wide and really picks it up. Quite a contrast in this first period from that game we saw back from May the 7th here at the Richmond Arena. Well, I think you'll see Richmond come around because in that, you know, you remember in that game they came on in the last part of the uh, third period led by that uh, wily veteran Gillis. A little bit of a moving pick called there on Richards and the ball goes over the Outlaws. The Outlaws may be feeling a bit of heat in here. It's warm in here, but I think they're feeling more heat from the Coquitlam Madnax right now. And, uh, he almost got himself beat there by Suzuki, who's a pretty good player in his own right. Back into the corner, that's Greg Jensen with the ball. Three of them behind the net there. Oh, the ball's knocked away and uh, interference called again on the on the Coquitlam Madnax. A little bit eagerness from uh, Ray Richards there. Twice he's been called for interference there. Yeah, well, he's uh, playing himself a bit of an aggressive game, and as long as he keeps doing it. Downey being uh, pinballed around a bit in the front of the net. There's quite a bit of wild swing going on there on the equipment side of things. Uh, 
Bobby Klein. I don't know if they really turned that a controlled slash or not. He's coming from quite a ways back. Then maybe get Richards to get another interference. How we get the ball back anyway. Greg Jensen being hounded by Chris Cowie. He's all over him. Chris Cowie with his, uh, I believe, six foot three inch frame all over Greg Jensen. Dorman with the, looking for a shot. Oh, he's in the crease, but it wasn't called, but easily saved by Iliak anyways. Dallas stayed right with him and waited for him to make the first move. And if Bill Benner can do that, he can be pretty tough. Score right now is four to one for the Quitman Adnax. You're watching Richmond Cable 10 with the Richmond Outlaws action here. A minute and a half left in this first period. Again, Bobby Klein laying a little bit of wood on to uh, John Swan, but interference called, I believe, on a moving pick there by the Outlaws. Well, it's, it was questionable. Suzuki comes up with it. Gives it off to number 18, Hedlund. Passes it across, that's Dalzell. Back to Gurney, Dalzell seeing a lot of floor time in this first period. He's won another one of their main callus, you know, besides Brunero. Just coming up, coming up to the one-minute mark remaining left in this first period. Jody Twa taking a bit of glove to the back of the head as he ran through the middle there. Yeah, it's just good defense. Twa with it. Pass it off, Dalzell. He's got 15 seconds left on the 30. Plenty of time to set something up here. Gurney. That's Hedlund with it. Two men on him. He loses it, but goes back. Dalzell picks it up. Five seconds on the 30. Now a delayed penalty on the outlaws. Jeriga, I think, might be getting it for a high stick. And Gurney with a shot. Saved his baby. He came up high on them there and tried to get that stick from him, but instead he caught a little bit on the chin strap instead. Yeah, high stick signaled against Richmond's Brian Jeriga, and they'll be playing shorthanded for the last 38 seconds of this first period. And one thing they don't need right now is to be doing shorthand. I don't want to see them get a goal here because that uh, that's a 5-1 lead is pretty tough. And like I say, these teams are both evenly matched, and uh, one break any way is going to uh, cost this game. Important face -off. Brian Jeriga. High sticking at 19-22. The two top face-off men going here, really, and uh, no, that isn't John Swan in for the face-off. No. That was number 15, Steve Downey with the face-off, and Quitman comes up with it. I watched Downey here last week against uh, Vancouver, and uh, on his shorthanded uh, defensive, he, he was impressive, and he had some good stick work, and he uh, was able to kill off the penalty, or one of the penalties on his own almost. 18 seconds left in this first period. Quitlam with the ball. Gurney looking for a shot. He's got seven seconds on the 30. Shot there by Dalzell wide of the net. Four seconds to go. I don't think they're going to get another shot off. Gurney's just looking to... Oh, they're going to lose the ball down the floor too. Richmond will have time with six seconds left to set something up. Maybe try and sneak a goal in before they go into the intermission. And get down there quick and get this to go their way. Maybe we'll have a little closer game. That's Downey with a shot. Oh, Ooh. off the goal post. Awfully close. Way to end the uh, first period here. Yeah. Not, not, a, not a classic period for the Richmond Outlaws. No, it kind of reminds me of watching the Canucks sometimes. But they, uh, Richmond, I think they'll come back in the second period. You know, they had this one period of frustration. Uh, Coquitlam has some breaks. But uh, you'll see Richmond. They'll come around. I saw, um, I saw uh, Dan Mattinson taking a lot of notes. Taking a lot of notes in that uh, first period of play there. He may be... Uh, having a few things to say to the boys in the dressing room. Uh, you uh, got the shots there, did you? I got the one uh, on Richmond's. Uh, Dallas made himself 14 uh, nice. saves, but uh, he had uh, definitely had the edge and play coming towards him. I think Dan's having a few words of referee, but, you know, it's, it's a tough game to call when there's only one referee going. Well, a score after one period of plays. The Richmond Outlaws won the Quitlam Adnex 4. We'll be back with more action from the Richmond Arena in Senior A Lacrosse. Welcome back for the second period of action here at the Richmond Arena. The score is Quitlam Adnex 4. Richmond Outlaws 1 in Richmond Cable 10 coverage of the Richmond Outlaws inaugural season. The first period scoring saw Richmond jump out to a quick lead at 2.16. Goal there by Mike Gillis with assist going to Brad Henry and to Dale Robertson. Quitlam came back at 5.03 with Bobby Klein, a former Richmond Roadrunner, getting the goal with the assist going to Mike Reilly, the first of three. Quitlam's second goal came from number five, Adair. The assist going there to Brunero, and that came at 6.38. Their third goal was a short-handed goal. And it was at 8.36, scored by Brunero, with the assist going to Reilly with his second assist and to the goalkeeper, Bill Thomas. And Coquitlam's fourth goal came at 10.51 of the first period,
scored there by Troy Gurney when he walked through the four or five Richmond players standing in front of him, and uh, the assist going again to Reilly with his third assist, and to Nadazdi. And uh, I think we're going to have to expect bigger and better things from the Outlaws this period, Lance. Well, hopefully Dan gave a little talk to them in the dressing room because they looked good for about three minutes of the first 20. In the first three minutes, they uh, came out fairly fast with Mike Gillis getting the goal. And then after that, they seem to go into that low. <coughs> I've been talking to a couple of players this year about this problem. Uh, Greg Jensen was telling me that uh, they go about five minutes during the period. They just seem to go into a daze. And uh, the other team comes back and gets what they need to put the game a lot closer. And then they start moving again. I don't know. Um, it's probably inexperience, I would have to think. Um, and the level of uh, intensity has got to be brought up, uh, brought up for the full 20 minutes in the period. This will come with uh, time. And like I say, they've been in every game this year. And if they get over that one little hump, they're going to... They're going to be a competitive team. I think one bit of consolation is the Outlaws were down 5-2 to two after the first period in Coquitlam in their game that they came back to beat the uh, Adenax 11-10, scoring the winner with just 23, sorry, with um, 43 seconds left in the game. Well, like I say, they're evenly matched teams, and uh, you'll see that through this game. <coughs> Interference called there on the Adenax. The Outlaws going to take possession. John Swan was tripped up there by Kirk Suzuki. And up with the ball, quick breakaway there for Downey. Oh, he puts it right in the middle of the belly pad there on Thomas. He maybe could have tried to fake and put it, put it down, but he elected to try and put it in the top corner. Well, he's kind of hasty with that shot, and uh, it cost him. He was set up nicely there by Gillis, and um, he didn't uh, come through with it. I think maybe he was a bit surprised at having the breakaway so easily there. That's uh, Dalzell losing the ball in the corner there. Downey hustling for it, but Adair comes up with it for Quentin. Back out, that's uh, number 20, Bernero, with it now, getting the ball from Gurney. Back over to Dalzell. Gurney coming through, but loses the ball, and Downey picks it up for the Outlaws. Only two seconds left in the 30 for Quitlam, so they needed that one. Downey being watched there by Dalzell and by number five, Jeff Adair. Downey knows how to use that stick. He's uh, one other fella in the WLA that I always think of when I think of good stick work is Earl Coran for uh, the Berards. And he uh, knows how to move it, you know, with one hand, and it's pretty fancy. All these names of former Richmond uh, Roadrunners, Quran was another one. They're spread out all over the D Western Lacrosse Association, the Richmond Roadrunners having very strong teams through the 70s and early 80s. Richmond's produced some good players in its time, and uh, they're still going to produce some good ones. I've seen some younger of the LL teams, uh, the intermediate team and the junior have a couple of good players. Of course, I forgot to mention that uh, Richmond was shorthanded there for the first uh, minute and 22 seconds of that second period, so they're now back at even strength. Maybe that's a good sign that we didn't even notice that. Maybe it uh, shows that they're getting into this game. Jeriga had been off, but he's back on now, and they're uh, setting up to defend the Adnex. Shot there off the goal post. Maybe a little bit lucky there for Eliak. He was a little slow getting over to it. Uh, Jeriga taking a look there, or is that Mike Gillis? That's Mike Gillis with the ball right now to the right of Thomas. Back out top, that's number 19, Davidson with the ball. Jensen ducked down a bit in this. I think he was hoping maybe for a high sticking call, but... Uh, you, can't, uh, you can't put your head down at all in this league, otherwise uh, you'll promptly have it taken off. Tempted shot there by Clinton's number four, Mark Nadazdi. Still going to work on that <laughs> name for a while, but it went wild as he was uh, had his stick hit away at the last minute. Davidson bring it up. Nope. That was number four. Troy Pelzer with a shot there off of Thomas. Ball still running loose there. And as he trying for a bit, Davidson comes up with a shot. Oh, right, right bottom corner uh, past Thomas. I think it was around a screen, and he didn't really get a good look at the ball. Thomas can't be happy with that one at all. It, uh, it went right under his stick. It didn't look like he even had a stick on the floor. So that might be just the thing that Richmond needs to get himself a quick little goal and it's from the newcomer, Davidson. Scored by number 19, Bruce Davidson, unassisted at 2 minutes, 29 seconds. Well, that makes the score Richmond 2, Coquitlam 4. And that comes with, like they said, 2 minutes and 29 seconds into the second period. Quick goals at the beginning of both periods. Let's hope they can do something with it this time. This time they have to keep up that intensity and start checking. Lowner losing, losing the ball there, but it goes back over to Coquitlam. A little bit of an interference call there by referee Don Leach. Uh, Davidson had him set up there and uh, almost put a good shot on him. Don, he's going to have to work this one by himself. We're here during the first intermission. He's doing a good job so far. 
Nadasdi with the ball in the corner being watched there by uh, can't see who that is looks like Jiriga now as Launer takes a shot wide of the net well, I don't know if I, the coach can be happy with that one the ball goes loose into the Quitland bench and Richmond takes over Jiriga passing it off as he goes off the floor that's Stu Watson with the ball this is the first time we've seen Stu this year. He was injured when the Outlaws played their home opener here against the newest Mr. Salmon Bellies. Stu's a pretty consistent player. They're expecting big things from him as he had a good, excellent junior career. Well, once again, you know, uh, Richie's biggest problem is the experience. They're going to have to pick up some of that. Watson with a shot low, easily turned away by the leg of Bill Thomas. Quillen quickly coming back up there, working that fast break a bit as uh, much as possible. That's what we like to see. That's Madison. That's Madison's philosophy, what just happened here. They uh, broke out quickly and looked up floor with the ball. So Whitlam coming back again now. That's uh, Dobre passing it off to Kirk Suzuki. A little bit of high sticking going on there. I think Whitlam guy maybe uh, raised it up with his, with his own stick. Coming up with the ball there is number eight, Jim Dorman, working around uh, Stu Watson. The shot goes off Eliak. Picked up there, the loose ball by Cowie, but he loses it now. That was a nice save by Elia. Played him once again. Let him make the first move. Mike Gillis with the ball. Taking it from Downey. Being watched there. By number nine, Bobby Klein. It's not as much slashing in this game as usual. Callison with the ball now. <laughs> yes, Somebody say. trying to prove me wrong upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Just as he says it, Bobby Klein gives a couple of good whacks. Ball goes wide of the net there on the shot by Callison. Richmond loses the ball on the 30 seconds. I think we're too high in the gondola here in uh, Richmond Arena. I mean, not seeing everything that happens. Yeah, the uh, we've got a little update here. The Canadian flag is still at half mast. Uh, looks like it's maybe sinking a bit since the first period, but we'll leave it alone for the rest of this. Uh, well, you'll rest see of it this sink. Game. You'll see it sink lower, kind of like our Canadian dollar. <laughs> Headland losing the ball there. Picks it up again. Come on, you're not supposed to laugh at your own jokes, Lance. I'm laughing at how pathetic my second one was. The Bernero. belly one was bad, but this is worse. Bernero loses the ball there on the 30-second clock. A lot of uh, a lot of 30-second violations this evening as compared to the opener against the Salmon Bellies. The team's trying to work it for everything they can get. Also, there seems to be a lot of balls being dropped on that tonight, so that could be another factor in it. Like I say, they haven't had this good idea. Bit of a crazy shot there by Troy Pelzer trying to go underneath his legs almost as he was jumping up in the air. Quick shot here. That was Don McNeil with the ball going way over the net on the bounce shot. Quitlam brings it back up. Dirty. I'm going to have to get in a little closer with that bounce shot. I've known a few of them have uh, hit and gone up high. I'm going to have to get the shots a little better placed. Paulo Bernero taking the ball from Jody Twa. Twa trying to set a pick there for him. Goes over to Dalzell. Not an awful lot going on in front of the net, so he goes back to Bernero. Being watched closely there by number 20, Derek Milani, who knocked the ball away. Still running loose. Interference going somewhere there, but uh, oh, a little oh. A quick slash there by number 14 for Quentin Dobre. Delayed penalty coming up. Shot there easily saved by Thomas, and the delayed penalty going to Dobre. High it sticking on the play. Looked like Milani was going to... Uh uh, react to that, and uh, he saw that they were going to get a penalty, and so he showed a few smarts there by staying away from it and giving Richmond the power play. For high sticking at 6.02. Dobre for high sticking. Richmond goes on the power play again. See if they can get a quick power play goal and make it 4-3. to three. They're starting to run with Coquitlam now, you know. And they're going to uh, be better in the, well, this period and next period if they keep it up definitely not been a uh, hard hitting game so far. No, it's uh, a lot of speed out there, but uh, not too much in the way of aggressiveness. That kind of happened last week with the Brars. They uh, got aggressive with the Outlaws and it showed as uh, Brards pulled Rich away from them. Richard's power play unit coming out. Swan, along with Hurd, Henry, Callison, and Danny Lamont. Ball goes wide there, shot by Hurd. Clinton takes over as it hit the roof. Hurd picks it up again, a loose ball there, dropped by John Hedlund. He uh, curses at himself as he... Uh, Hedlund had daylight there if he was able to control it. Again, Hurd with the ball, back over to Swan, Hurd again. Richmond setting up, but nobody's cutting through the middle, trying to create any space in there. Thomas takes the shot easily from way out top from LeMond. Swan drops the ball, he's being watched there. 
still. He picks it up, manages to pick it up. Still lots of time on the 30-second clock. They should try to get Kelson or Henry in front there when they can't get these shots into them. Still wild passing going on from the Outlaws, and they're losing a lot of loose balls that they normally shouldn't be. Oh, pretty good, pretty good bit of holding there by John Swan. Gets a lot of ranting and raving from the Quitlam bench there. And the ball's thrown away by the Quitlam player. Well, it looks like he just got tangled up with them. You can get away with a bit of holding in this league, you know, and find yourself not sitting in the penalty box. The Whitland coach Al Luthwaite wasn't too happy about that one, but uh, play goes on. Swan, that's Lamont, back to Swan. Shot there, but no, pass by Hurd, a nice goal. Top corner, Brad Henry picks it. Thomas didn't have a chance to get over there fast enough. That's the sort of thing we saw in our first telecast. Uh, Richmond was passing the ball around well and getting the shots off real quick, and they showed it there. So maybe this is a, a sign of things to come tonight. Well, it's a power play goal for the Outlaws, one that they desperately needed, I think, to uh, get them right back in this one. Now they're back to 4-3. to three. Well, I'd like to say the teams are even. This is where you have to see the breaks. Quickfilm had the breaks in the first period, and maybe Richmond would get them in the second period. Show some talent here. They'll be okay. Scored by number 12, Brad Henry. Assist to number 9, Russ Hurd. And number 8, John Swan. Time of the goal, 7-28. Henry with his second point of the game there. Nice nice power play goal. Makes the score for Whitland four, Richmond three. Just over seven and a half minutes into the second period of play. Shot there by Bernardo as he dove forward. Easily turned aside by Iliak and Richmond breaks back out quickly. That's Callison being watched by Dalzell. Making his move now. Ball is pulled outside by Danny Lamond. Goes back inside to McNeil but he dropped it. Gurney picks it up. Bernardo bringing it back up. That's pulled his off his foot and wild down the floor. Good little check. A lot of screaming going on here as the fans, I'd say, are mostly rich, but Quitlam has their own cheering section here tonight. There's no doubt about that. The well, fans of Quitlam are pretty faithful to their teams. And I think oh. they might have gotten away with a little something there. And Quitlam's the thing, the tempers are starting to flare up as referee Don Leach is being besieged by people here. There was a back in there that he didn't observe because he had just turned his head and Richmond tossed it back into their goalkeeper, which they're not allowed to do in the senior circuit this year. I feel sorry for Mr. Leach right now. He's got a tough job being out there by himself. Very tough job. Even with two men, it's a tough job out there. I don't think he's going to get any symphony. Or sym blah, 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 symphony, blah. yes. Thank uh, you, Symphony, Vancouver. <laughs> it's not going to get any pity from the Coquitlam coach. No, Al Luthwaite's, uh, of course, had his own few years in lacrosse, and he knows what's going on out there. Shot there by Davidson, easily saved by Thomas. He went down to his knees to block that one. Things really starting to heat up, though. You can feel the uh, tension starting to get a little bit higher out in the floor now. Well, Richmond's starting to get into this game now. Kirk Suzuki with the ball. Sorry, Lance, go ahead. No, I was saying maybe they had their piece of orange in the intermission and it's starting to get the energy. Suzuki with a shot wide of the net behind his back. Maybe he should have tried for something a little bit better than that. he has got his own rebound off a strange bounce there. Davidson passing it long. Downey picks it up there. Did well to pick it up on a shoestring catch. He's got a good stick on him, that Downey. In the corner, that's Gillis in behind to Stu Watson. Two Richmond players collide in front of the net. That was Gillis and uh, Dale Robertson. Robertson oh, back over to Stu Watson. Gillis interfered with there as he missed the ball, but Quinton comes back quickly, two on one. Klein and... Uh, Number eight, Dorman with it, shot there, saved easily by Iliak. Richmond's starting to move around now here in front of the net there on Quitlam's side. They were passing well, and everybody was trying to get in the open, find some open space, so that's what uh, they need to do. See, Watson's wearing himself a uh, fancy knees brace there. It looks like he's limping a bit. Dallas asking for time there. He's uh, getting his equipment adjusted there, a little bit of help from Dale Robertson. That kind of helps give him a little rest, too. Just looking over the stats from the game in Coquitlam here, I've got them in front of me. There were the Richmond players that uh, really shone were his usual uh, Brad Henry with uh, two goals and a couple of assists. And Steve Downey had himself, as you said, a good game there too. So we're looking for big things from those guys in the rest of this game. Henry, shot saved by Thomas. And the ball comes up. Coquitlam looking long. Chris Cowie throwing it for Bobby Klein. Oh, it goes right through his stick. He better check for a hole in that one. Well, maybe a little more practice. Mike Gillis taking the ball from Iliak, being, oh, and knocked away by Bobby Klein. Good hustle to get back and uh, get the loose ball for Quitlam. Cowie comes up with it. 
Would get us to get a little swipe at uh, Klein there. I guess uh, he wasn't too happy with missing on his breakaway, and he goes to the bench, clinching his fist. Uh, gives a gives a good squat to the glass on the bench when he gets down there too. Dalzell taking the ball from Twa. He's been, got some room to motor far side, just just wide of the net. There's a reset there. I don't know if it was signaled by the referee or not, but uh, Quitlam got it. I thought it just went wider than that, but Bernero with the ball. In, called in the crease, there was Headland, and the ball goes over to the outlaws. They've yeah, been resetting it quite a bit tonight. Uh, I think they're uh, trying to help out the referee a bit. He's getting on, uh, trying to stay on top of it as much as he can. Like we say, it's tough when it's a two-man job. Callison taking a lot of wood from Dalzell. Cross that's uh, Lamont, passes it and loses it. Bad pass there, and Trois comes up with it from Dalzell. Cody showing a little bit of speed, but not much. He's not exactly the fastest player in the league. Lamont passing it up the floor. That's uh, Don McNeil. Cross to Callison, looking for somebody open. There isn't anybody right now. They're tying him up well. Passes it back out to number 20, Derek Milani. Good design, but he had nowhere to go with that one. Richmond picks up the ball off the shot there, and they've got a new 30-second clock to work with. Off the bench is Greg Jensen taking the ball around in behind the net. Callison, oh, there was a slash or something called there on Coquitlam. The referee Don Leach has a penalty signaled. Richmond's goalkeeper Elliott comes to the bench. They've got 24 seconds to set something up with the extra attacker. Be a good time to tie it up. Callison setting up up top. Passes across number four, Pelzer. Callison back again. Gonna get a couple of players in front there. I'm trying to get the Coquitlam players out. A lot of, lot of stuff going on in front of the net. And a slashing penalty signal against the Coquitlam Adnax. Well, there hasn't been too much in the way of uh, extracurricular activities in this game, and uh, that may be a good thing for Richmond. Uh, they use their speed to their advantage most of the time, but uh, when they get, you know... Rob Dalzell, two minutes for slashing at 12-17. Uh, the saying is uh, that when the outlaws do start uh, hitting with teams, they, they get intimidated. And that's the inexperience factor. I'm looking over my shoulder here, and I see uh, Rick Beaster <laughs> is the coach of the intermediate team wearing a, a strange apparel <laughs> bordering on San Francisco type. Uh, he's got some nice shorts on, a uh, little bit of summery weather today, and it brings out the uh, best of everybody there. I don't think we're going to get a camera angle of those, but they're worth seeing. John Swan with the ball. Richard setting up in the power play. Again, Swan, Lamond, Henry, Hurd, and uh, can't see who's in the corner. Should be Eric or Keith Callison. Yes. Swan looking for a shot. Top corner easily turned aside by Thomas, though. Richmond gets the ball back off the shot. Top corner again. That was Heard trying at that time and turned aside again by Thomas. They got a full 30 to work with. Uh, they're looking for something now, though. They're not waiting for the future. They want to get it in the present. They're starting to work well here. They're starting to show their speed against this Kukwitlam team. And that was a nice little dive there, but that, the Das. <laughs> Just over 13 minutes gone in the second period, and it's still Coquitlam 4, Richmond 3 on Richmond Cable 10, Richmond Outlaw Lacrosse here at the Richmond Arena. I think Richmond's I've had too much sun today, Dan. Richmond still on the power play. Shot, looking for a shot there was Lamond. Pass it off. Nice goal there by Brad Henry. Once again, they're showing some good passing on the power play, and it comes through for them again with their second power play goal in a row. Well, Brad Henry with, a, with his second goal of the night, second power play goal of the night, and Richmond is right back in this one. Now it's tied at four in the second period of play here at the Richmond Arena. Goal scored by number 12, his second of the night, Brad Henry. Assist to number 14, Dan LeMond, and number eight, John Swan. Time and a goal, 13-25. It was a nice pass there by Dan LeMond. LeMond. Uh, to uh, Brad Henry to reach around Bill Thomas and put it in the far side bottom corner. Very nice in, goal in the power play. Do you think we're in the Montreal form tonight? We've got our bilingual announcer, John Filtha, <laughs> with us tonight. It's just over six minutes left in the second period now. Richmond comes up with the ball there. That's uh, Henry. Passes it off to Stu Watson. Picks it up. He's Stu's, I think, still playing himself into shape right now. Gillis looking. Oh, takes the shot on his own. Thomas turned it aside. Mike was showing some fancy play there by looking over and taking the shot. He knew where he wanted to go with it, and Thomas came up with a nice save. Richmond has definitely come on in the play here in the second period, and it's uh, showing on the score, and it's showing in the play out in the floor right now. 
That's Henry with another shot just wide of the net, but they're controlling the rebounds and everything out there right now. They're starting to take the play away from Coquitlam and doing what Coquitlam did in the first period. Oh, a nice try there by Henry on the sub shot, but uh, went wide of the net. There's five seconds left on the 30-second clock. They're going to have to get a shot off. I don't think they're going to get it, though. Ball goes over to Coquitlam on the 30 seconds. I think Coquitlam's going to have some troubles this year, and it's uh, quite noticeable that their scoring threats uh, are missing right now, and Dallas isn't getting much work from their offense. They're going to have to try to find something good or a silver lining somewhere. Of course, they haven't got either of the Prentice brothers out there. Dean Prentice, the goalkeeper, being cut from the team the other day to make way for Terry Shell, another Richmond, ex Richmond Roadrunner. Saved there by Thomas, off the shot by Steve Downey. Ball's picked up there on the rebound by number four, Troy Pelzer, and he passes it back out to Russ Hurd. Got to hurt not having Manning in the lineup with 70 points, with 74 yeah. points last year, third in scoring. Yeah, Doug Manning's not there, and neither is Guy Prentice, the other half of the Prentice brothers, one of the equipment assistants. He's mm -hmm. out with, uh, I believe, an injured shoulder or something this evening. That's number nine, Bobby Klein with the ball, working around a pick there. A lot of, a lot of wooden uh, movement in front of the net there. Shot attempted by number 15, Ray Richards. And uh, Iliak throwing it back up to Swan. Quickly breaking out two on two. Three on three now with the other two players coming out the floor. That's uh, Jeriga with the ball. Back out to Pelzer. May discuss uh, Coquitlam's problem, but it's not to take anything away from Richmond's play because they're playing really well right now. Uh, they seem to be running and quite more aggressive than they were in the first period. They have to run in this league. The shot went astray of the net there. Rob, or, uh, Davidson fighting for the loose ball that Coquitlam controls. That's Chris Cowie with it now. Four minutes and seven seconds left in this second period, and we're tied at four between the Coquitlam Adnax and the Richmond Outlaws here at the Richmond Arena on Richmond Cable 10. Well, it's starting to shape up Richmond's way right now, and I'm starting to enjoy this game. It was kind of boring in the first. Nice shot there by Hedlund. Almost knocked a stick right out of Iliak's hand there, but uh, Iliak turned it aside. He's on Jody Trois losing the ball there momentarily. Iliak's on top of his game tonight. Dalzell. Oh, a wild swing there by Bruce Davidson, but didn't really accomplish that much. That's Gurney with the ball now. What, being watched there by number four, Troy Pelzer. Right out there on defense tonight, playing a strong game defensively. Iliak turning it aside easily. Coquitlam's got another new 30-second clock to work with. Now they're getting the rebounds down the Richmond end. Jody Twa with it. The Richmond's keeping them all out of there right now. Good save by Dallas Iliak getting across quickly to stop that shot by uh, Dalzell. Shot there by Brunero, way wide of the net. Oh, chance for a breakaway here. Bruce Davidson, he's running down on a loose ball. Dalzell running back quickly to, to help out. Passes it to Hurd. Hurd looking for a shot, saved by Thomas. Tried to shoot around the screen there, but shot right into the belly pad. That was a fairly good design pass. I guess Bruce is, uh, doesn't have his legs yet, so he uh, had troubles getting up to that ball. Didn't want to chance it against uh, the wily veteran Rob Dalzell. Quitlam with the ball. That's number 19, Mike Lawner. Back into the corner. Can't quite see who it is. I think it's Adair. It is. Being watched there by Greg Jensen. Jensen staying right on top, and he's going to run out of time, and he does. It was a nice defensive play by Greg. He stayed square with him and didn't get him between him and the goal. Richmond's good little defensive team tonight, and they're I, showing it. It sort of changes from night to night from what I understand, though. Callison back over to McNeil. Still lots of time for something to set up here, but they got to get some motion going in front of the net. Lamont throwing a wildly into the corner and picked up there by Lawner. I don't quite know who that was intended for. Willem again throws it away now, and McNeil is trying to pick up the loose ball. Being watched there by Nadasdi. Interference called by referee Don Leach. Nadasdi had to look over an appeal before he got the call, but... Uh, they just starting to say his name a little better now, which is not too bad. I still can't figure it out. That's Chris Cowie, I believe, with the ball right now. Passing it back over to number 15. Ray Richards shooting way wide of the net. Ball goes way back down into goalkeeper Bill Thomas. Another one of the uh, Richmond players playing well tonight is uh, Russ Hurd. Picked up a couple of assists on the power play there. Ball running loose there. Suzuki and Jensen fighting it out. Jensen picks it up and lost it. Suzuki. 30-second clock buzzed there and uh, 
Suzuki. Suzuki's a little testy down Coquitlam, that one. Coquitlam keeps the ball. Suzuki thought that they were going to lose the ball there because it should have been a lost possession maybe. But Cowie taking it now for Coquitlam. Coquitlam keeps it. Ball way wide over the net, and the ball will now go over to Richmond. You see, watch uh, Suzuki. He is a, uh, a good little player. Um, kind of wonder if he's a doctor or not. Dr. Suzuki, could be. <laughs> Got to keep up with my bad jokes. No comments on the nature of things. Coquitlam coming up with the ball, Bill Thomas. Just under a minute left in the second period. We're still tied at four here at the Richmond Arena. Richmond Outlaws lacrosse action, Western Lacrosse Association action on this busy night. Jody Twa with the ball. Passes it off. That's number two, Ray Hamilton with the, no, sorry, that's number 20, Paula Bernero. Let me get my numbers straight here. Jody Twa passes it across to Headland. Watch there and check, and Richmond comes back up three on one now. Running well, Coquitlam sort of dogging it back. Stu Watson passes to Robertson, saved there by Thomas. Robertson was trying for the upper corner. Downey right on top of him afterwards held the ball from going down the floor, and we're in the last 20 seconds of the second period. That was a nice save by Thomas. He waited for him to make the move. Head Headland coming down, 10 seconds left. Ball goes way wide, loose again. Bernero with it there, checked and interfered with by Richmond's number 18, Mike Gillis. They got four seconds left to go in this second period. Bernero passing it. Headland loses the ball and we're going to run out of time. An excellent period from the uh, Outlaws standpoint as compared to that first period of play, Lance. Well, that first period, I like to say, was a bit of a bore and Coquitlam came out and they played well and they deserved that lead. Richmond turned things around in the second. I guess Dan had a little talk with them and they came out, showed their speed and showed their fine play on the power play. And they're tied with them now. And the Richmond fans give them a well-earned round of applause there for that second period of play, which saw them score the only three goals and uh, get right back in this game. It should be interesting to see what's going to happen in the third period. Saves in the second period were decidedly different from the first period. It was 15-12 saves in Richmond's favor. I guess 15 for Dallas Eliak in the first period, 12 for Coquitlam's goalie Bill Thomas. Second period saw Coquitlam's Bill Thomas make 18 saves, while Dallas Eliak was not quite as busy with only 12 saves. And uh, it showed the difference in play between the two periods. I give Mr. Thomas some credit because he came under fire there in that period and he stood up well, such as Dallas did also. Um, like I say, Dallas is on top of his game. He's a pretty tough goaltender to beat. Yeah, well, that comes with being the first round draft pick in the uh, WLA's draft this year. Anyways, the score after two periods is Richmond 4, Coquitlam 4. You're watching Richmond Cable 10. We'll be back in third period action in just one moment. what you want. Welcome back for third period action here at the Richmond Arena. The score is 4-4 between the Richmond Outlaws and the Coquitlam, Coquitlam Senior Adnacks here in Western Lacrosse Association action. Second period wrap-up went as follows. Richmond got all three goals, two on the power play. Their second goal was scored by number 19. That's Bruce Davidson, the newest outlaw, at 229. Their third goal was a power play goal scored by Brad Henry at 728. The assist going to Hurd and Swan, and their fourth goal came at 13:25. power play goal, Henry from Lamond and Swan, and that makes it 4-4 after two periods. Well, they're going to have to keep up that momentum they built up in the second period, and uh, I think things will go well for Richmond tonight, as long as they can keep up that momentum. Okay, we got uh, Richmond, teams are even strength right now, we got that straight for this period anyways. Um, Quitlam coming back up with the ball and uh, just switching pens here with Rob Clovens from the review. He stole my pen and Jody Twa comes up with it almost, but, but the Outlaws knock it back into their crease. Quitlam looking for a back end, but they didn't get it. And uh, the Outlaws bring the ball up. I was talking to Mike before the period and he, or between the periods and he was kind of happy with the way the Richmond team was playing right now. I'm talking, of course, about Mr. Gillis. I'm wondering whether you're going to get that in. Everybody's sitting with the same Mike who? Well, you know, I knew I uh, kind of blew it there, but I uh, thought I came back right away. That's okay. We'll let you off the hook for that one. <laughs> the Outlaws looking for, they're running out of time, though. With one second on the 30, and he, Brad Henry just tosses the ball down. He knew he was going to lose it anyways. You see, Twa um, gave him a bit of a high shot there, and the uh, referee, Mr. Leach, was looking right at it, but uh, he didn't call it. 
That's Ray Hamilton with the ball. Passing it off to number 21, Mike Reilly, the team captain for Coquitlam, having himself a good game so far. He's been one of the strong players for Coquitlam in this 4-4 tie. Adair losing the ball there. He's pounded constantly by Dale Robertson, but he comes up with it again. Good hustle by Adair, but he's going to run out of time on the 30. Nadaz D throws the ball away into the corner. I'll stay away right away from that one, but what I was going to say is Dallas took a little chop at him in the corner there, uh, Adair. And uh, he's looking at the ball checking himself. It was a good hustle. Darcy Phillips out for another shift. Just lost, uh, passed the ball off from Callis and lost it there in the corner. And Adair picks it up again. Being watched there by McNeil. McNeil had him pinned, but he still managed to get the ball off. And now controlling is Ray Hamilton, taking the ball from Kevin Dobre. Sorry, Paul Dobre. We'll get these names straight yet. That's uh, Bobby Klein being watched there by Dallas Eliak in behind the net. He's still on the loose ball. With Ten seconds left on the 30. Picked up there by Suzuki. Motoring around, loses the ball. Way back into his own end there. That's some scrambly play to start this third period. Ball thrown away long there by Bill Thomas. Kill a bit of time and let his troops come back and set up. Well, they're going to have to, uh, Richmond's going to have to settle down here. Uh, Coquitlam isn't, and well, actually both teams aren't, but uh, Richmond uh, has the chance here to take the ball by the horns. That's number 20 for Richmond. Derek Milani with the ball being watched there and hacked constantly by number four, Mark Nadasdi. Nadasdi still on him and gets the ball away from him. That's all you can ask for. Nadasdi had some show of determination there on his face. Well done Not there that trying ball. that name, Lance. Uh, I thought you were going to steer it away from it. Though. Oh, well, I got daring. Chris Cowie passes it off as he goes to the floor, off the floor and Bernero passes it to, da to Dalzell. In the case of the tongue twisters here. Ten seconds left on the 30-second clock, being watched there by McNeil. Passes right across to number 10, Jody Trois. And shot there by Brunero. It went off the goalkeeper, so they got a reset, but Richmond comes up with the loose ball. Callison running off the bench is Bruce Davidson, along with Greg Jensen, as they change on the fly. Out comes Russ Hurd. And joining him are number four, Troy Pelzer and John Swan. I've been impressed with uh, Davidson so far tonight. He's uh, showed some good hustle out there, and he's really trying to work hard. Swanee being watched there by Dalzell. The ball goes loose in the corner, and up comes Mr. Headland for Coquitlam, throwing it away to his teammate, Troy Gurney. Jody Twa with the ball, being watched there by Russ Hurd. Now watched by Greg Jensen. Moving through the middle there, loses the ball, shot, saved there by Eliak, and the ball goes behind him, but he grabs it before he goes into the net. Looking, looking long up the floor there for Davidson, but passes it off safely. Twelve showed some good hustle there, and he uh, went for the gusto as he tried to break into the middle on three outlaw players. That's uh, Troy Pelzer with the ball, now taking it from Greg Jensen. Ball goes glancing off a of gurney stick and almost went into the net there. Bill Thomas didn't know where the heck it had gone, but safely comes away with his Jody Twelve. Bringing the ball back up the floor. It's uh, four and a half minutes into this third period. The score is still tied at four on Richmond Cable 10. They're starting to uh, slow down a bit again, unlike that second period. Ray Hamilton with the shot, saved by Eliak. Ball stays in the crease, and Bruce Davidson knocks it back into safety. Dallas Eliak tossing it off to Troy Pelzer. Smart little play by Davidson. Henry down in, in behind the net, Mikey Gillis. Pass, looking for somebody to pass it back. He gets it to Stu Watson. Shot wide of the net there. Dobre trying to pick up the loose ball. It interferes a bit with uh, Stu Watson, but I think Watson had the ball in his stick, so play goes on. A lot of bodies going in the corner there on that loose ball, but Quillen finally comes up with it. That's really the team captain. You watch uh, Stu Watson when he starts getting in shape. He'll uh, start improving immensely. But uh, right now he's having a few troubles out there, but he's still playing well. Kirk Suzuki with the ball now. Being watched there by Downey. Suzuki across. Bobby Klein shot wide of the net. Ball goes way back and loose back into the Coquitlam man. Bill Thomas coming out to pick it up with five seconds on the 30. He's going to throw it way up. Maybe he'll take a shot. Yeah. He's going to try. It, uh, it doesn't quite make it through, though. Chris Cowie got in the way, and ball goes over to Richmond. So three times Thomas tried to uh, pocket one for his own. Off the bench, Darcy Phillips takes it, passes it up to McNeil, way up into Callison in the corner to the right of Bill Thomas. Looking back for number 20, Derek Milani. I'm still having trouble remembering his name. Shouldn't be. He's had the ball a lot this game. 
Interference there by Darcy Phillips called, and Chris Cowie picks up the ball and Quinton gets possession. Dorman passes it up to Klein, shot wide of the net as he's hit from behind there by Darcy Phillips. Back in called this time. I think Quinton's going to approve. A few Quinton fans are giving some sarcastic applause there. Oh, uh, they're uh, like I say, they they like their Quinton team and they don't like to see anything going against them. Dorman with the ball for Quitlam being watched there by McNeil. Comes right around the back of the net. Cowie with it now. Way out top. Ball goes loose into the corner. There's still a lot of stray passes going on out there. Klein hustling on the ball. And the ball's going to go back into Elia. Some scrappy play tonight. And now um, it's showing right now early in this third. I should say early. Seven minutes in already. The way these teams are passing and catching looks more like the exhibition series. Some of the exhibition games I took in. That's Callison being watched there by Klein. Crosses it over to, that was Danny Lamond that had it, and now it's McNeil. 10 seconds on the 30. Klein watching him again. He's all over the place on defense. Darcy Phillips with the ball in the straight pass from Callison. He's running out of time though. Greg Jensen looking for a shot. No, a little bit of something going on after the play. Kirk Suzuki taking on Greg Jensen away from the play there. They're just the bumping heads right now. Nothing much going on. They were mostly holding on to each other. You couldn't quite see it through the camera vision there, but uh, both players sort of bumping heads a little bit, and I think they're both going to be getting a little bit of roughing. Well, there was just a little... Actually, um, Suzuki and Jensen run into each other a couple of times tonight, and I guess it uh, kind of boiled over into a little bit of a dance. First little roughing altercation. <laughs> Richmond Outlaws penalty to number 10, Greg Jensen. Two minutes each for roughing at six. 49. Maybe um, jumping Jenner, as he's known to some, uh, is trying to spark his team by getting involved there. You see Swanee's once again giving Leach a handful and a mouthful. I see that's, that's our first roughing penalties of the game. That both says the way the play has been so far. It hasn't been a rough game. There's been some stick work, but it's been mostly a lot of speed through the first two and a half good, periods. Good clean lacrosse. Isn't it disgusting? <laughs> Bernardo would pass it off to Dalzell, shot wide of the net. And the ball goes crashing into the crowd. Headland trying to pick it up on its way there, but couldn't quite do so. Looking long there, that's number four. Pelzer shot, saved easily by Thomas, getting his arm on it, turning it away into the corner. Dalzell coming back with it now for Quitlam. Bernardo, they're coming down three on two. Bernardo, Gurney, and Dorman. Shot there, didn't quite get going there. And that's... Uh, Number nine, Russ Hurd with the ball. Pass it off there, nice little pass. Oh, beautiful goal, bottom corner, Stu Watson. Pretty nice, little play. Nice pass there from Russ Hurd. Watson puts it in the bottom corner. Well, that's what I like to see out of Russ Hurd. You know, he uh, had some patience there, waited for Stu Watson to come off the bench, and he caught up with the play and puts Richmond ahead. Stu Watson. Assist to number nine, Russ Hurd, and the goalie, number 35, Dallas Elliott. Dallas Final gets goal, his assist. Seven minutes, 30 seconds. Dallas mentioned to me he's going to try and get an assist tonight. Oh, ball goes loose there. The fans looking for a tripping call, but uh, I think goalkeeper Bill Thomas was just simply playing the ball there. I don't think he really intended to trip up Dale Robertson. Oh, Thomas takes up a lot of room there, and he looks like he's got some muscle to put people on the ground. The Dazdi working on Richmond's uh, Henry there, but couldn't get anything going past him. Ray Hamilton now with the ball being watched by Robertson. That's really looking for a shot. Still 10 seconds to go. Adair coming around his uh, checker there. That was uh, Stu Watson that uh, didn't really have a hold of him. He had a hook on him, and I think uh, Adair grabbed his stick as he went around. Coming down, the Outlaws three on two right now. That's uh, Downey, grabbed a bit, ball goes off to Thomas there, and Coquitlam controls. Downey shows his uh, good transition from going from one shoulder to the other with the stick there and getting a good shot. A lot of times uh, you'll find that uh, the players will try to get fancy instead of trying to position themselves for a good shot. Dorman raced the ball up the floor, they passes it off to Richards. In behind the net, that's Bobby Klein. 12 seconds left in the pair of penalties to the Richmond and Coquitlam players. Coquitlam called for a moving block in front of the net there. Quitlam bench screaming for a too many men call and they are going to get it. it. I think they helped referee Don Leach they, call that one. They got but it too. They've, they've still got five players and a goalie on the floor and they have a man in the box. See, Callison's having a huge time. He's accusing of Leach of not even seeing it and he's having a bit of a laugh. But uh, he's not going to get away with this. They're going to 
Richmond's going to end up playing shorthanded. You have to pay the consequences for that. It's twice we've seen that penalty tonight. <laughs> We're um, 8.42 into this third period here, and Richmond's going to be shorthanded in the next two minutes. A too many men call. And um, it's uh, still 5-4 to four for the Richmond Outlaws here. They had a strong second period to come back and take the lead, and this could be a troublesome penalty here. Penalty's being served by team assistant captain Keith Callison. It doesn't come at a good time, you know, as Richmond's starting to take a bit of the play away from Coquitlam, and now Coquitlam has a chance to put one in on the power play. Coquitlam putting their power play unit out in the floor. There's Dalzell, Dadair, Gurney, Brunero and number eight, Jim Dorman, setting up against Richmond's penalty kill. Jensen, that's a uh, oh, top corner, Brunero putting it by Dallas Elick, looking a little stunned on the shot there. Yeah, he was a nice shot, perfectly placed, and I guess Dallas, boy, he can't get them all. Didn't even have a chance to outline the Richmond uh, defenders there. It was so quick, but uh, that makes the score five all. We've still got ourselves a good game going here. You'll see it going down right to the fifth goal scored by number 20, Paulo Brunardo. Assistant number 25, Troy Gurney. And number 13, Rob Dalzell. Time of the goal, nine minutes, six seconds. Well, that's the second point this game for Bernero. He's, uh, he's getting the points out there, but uh, they're going to need some more from him, I think, this third period if they want to keep this up. The Outlaws controlling in the faceoff there, but uh, Robertson was checked and lost the ball. Gurney on the power, on the uh, breakaway, saved there by Dallas Eliak. The red light flashed on again, but there was no way the ball was in the net there. That was a nice save by Eliak. He got his glove out there and picked it off. Watson being draped all over by Dalzell. The fans looking for something there, but uh, Don Leach is just not given right now. He's got a tight game here, 10 minutes, in, 10 minutes into this third period. Still tied at five. Renero passing it off to Dalzell, looking top corner. Past Dallas Eliak and the Outlaws are down now by a goal, six to five. Looks like Renero is starting to uh, put things together for himself in this game, and he's been involved in Quitlam's last two goals. That was a nice one by Giselle. He's a, he's a veteran. He, uh, he knows where to put those shots on the net. Well, the Outlaws are going to have to tighten up on defense. They've been burned by a couple of fast breaks. Number 13, Rob Dalzell. Assist to number 20, Paulo Brunaro. And number 10, Jody Twa. Time of the goal, 9 minutes, 44 seconds. See Twa picking up a rare assist. He's had a difficult season so far. Maybe he'll come around. Interference called on the Admax there. The ball goes over to the Outlaws with 10-10 remaining in this third period. Here in Richmond, Cable 10s. Richmond Outlaws action. That's number 14, Dan Lamont, passing it off to McNeil, being watched there by Adair, going through for a shot, wide of the net. Not a very good shot there by McNeil. Just sort of uh, didn't really have much on that shot. No, he at least get it on net, but uh, now they lose the ball, and Quilton's got a chance to go up by two. Bring it up the floor, that's Nadasdi. Pass it off, Hamilton across. I can't see who it is yet, but uh, it's number five, Adair. Coming through, grabbed there by Darcy Phillips. But saved there by Elik. The ball was loose behind him and almost ran into the net. Bringing it back up the floor, that's Callison. Looking for help from his troops. Whitland has all five guys back. Shot there by Milani. Went off the goal, off the goal. Oh, nice goal there. Good, good work, timely work there by Danny Lamont. It was a nice rebound by Mr. Lamont. Bit of, a, bit of a strange play there. The shot went off the goal post and then off goalkeeper Bill Thomas. He still didn't know where the ball was and Lamont picked it up. We said we've had some strange things happen here tonight so far and uh, it's just uh, adding on. But it's an entertaining game and I'm sure the fans are happy. Scored by number 14, Dan Lelond. Assist to number 20, Derek Milani. And number 11, Keith Powerson. Time of the goal, 10 minutes. 38 Chiriga with a shot top corner from out top. Thomas went down onto his knees and got beaten over his right shoulder. He's well, not going to be happy with that one. No, he cannot be at all. It, uh, it just went straight in there. And he, like you say, he went right down. I guess he figured another Richmond bounce pass and it didn't come through. Shot was from 30 feet out top. He really wasn't even challenging on it. Right, number 16, Brian Uriga. Assist to number 19, Bruce Davidson. And number 8, John Swan. 
time of the goal. 10 minutes, 49 seconds. Well, Richmond is now back in the league. We're seesawing a bit here in the third period. It's Richmond 7, Coquitlam 6 now with just under nine minutes left to play. Eliak making the save there. A little bit of roughing away from the play with Swan and Kirk Suzuki involved again there. Hobbling down the floor, that's Jiriga. He's favoring his knee a bit there, I think. And saved there by Thomas. Klein picks it up, and Coquitlam's going to try and come back. Throws it away, though. Russ Hurd looking for the ball there. Being watched now by Chris Cowie. Cow Hurd throws it back. Nice pass back to Troy Pelzer and Richmond's gonna have another chance here to see if they can put another shot past Thomas. Swan winding up, oh, hits oh. the goal post close there. It was almost eight to six for the Outlaws. He had Thomas beat. Thomas seems flustered at the moment for some reason. Play seems to be picking up a bit here now though. Well, it's starting to liven up here, uh, unlike the first 10 minutes of this uh, third period. I expect uh, Richmond to try to pick up the tempo and utilize that speed they have. Of course, the shots on goal were close through the first two periods. Uh, Dallas Eliak making 27 saves, while Coquitlam's Bill Thomas making 30 saves. So uh, it's been it's been a tightly played game, and it's showing it on the scoreboard still at 7 to 6. A little bit of a delay going on as Bill Thomas goes to the bench for some repairs, maybe trying to slow things down a bit. Uh, Thomas needs himself a little rest right now while this game is going. Uh, he's not playing too bad a game. Like I say, right now he's a little flustered, though. Yeah, well, it's uh, eight minutes and 24 seconds left to go in this third period. And Richmond's in a bit of a huddle right now at the face-off circle, trying to figure out quite what they want to uh, set up off this face-off. Well, they played their game for the last couple of periods. First period they came out, they looked like they uh, have, had been golfing. Yeah, well, they... Um, no, I don't know what to say about that one, Lance. Uh, maybe you can <laughs> add something to your comment there. Oh, about the golfing? Wow, no, I was uh, had a friend of mine that I went golfing with today, and he uh, he was uh, soundly thrashed. Whereas, um, if I might have to say so myself, I had one of my finer games. But uh, my partner John Coulthard didn't play too well. He's taken by the wily veteran of Cochina, Jim Fraser. So I'm kind of looking around for another partner now to well, replace him. You better make sure he doesn't watch the uh, replay of this telecast here. The face-off coming now. In there for Richmond is number nine, no, sorry, number 15, Steve Downey, but Coquitlam controls the face off there. Bernero winning it and getting it back to 18, which is John Headland. Bernero now with the ball. This is Coquitlam's big line here. Ooh, he could have had an interference on Mike there, but. Uh, I think uh, Dalzell was holding onto his stick a bit too, though. Gillis is throwing his hands up a little bit, trying to say, I'm not, uh, not doing this. And the referee let play go on. Bernero gets it in deep to. Gurney passes it back up to Headland, loses the ball there. Interference away from the ball now, but uh, play continues. Richmond picks up the ball on the 30-second count. That's Stu Watson had a stick hang and almost lost the ball there, but Downey gets it now and into the corner to the right of Bill Thomas. There's some good hitting out there right now. You know, there's clean shots. Nothing too dirty. Oh, Downey trying a desperation-type pass, and it just didn't work. But good to work there by Brad Henry to get it back. Shot wide of the net. That was Robertson. Just couldn't quite get it on the net there. They're still having trouble hitting the net. Oh, well, they're trying to pick those corners, you know, and trying to cut as close as they can. And uh, the way Thomas is playing right now, they may not have to do that. Two on one. Jody Twa passes it to Adair. Save there by Dallas Eliak. A nice save, twisting his body back to get his body in front of the ball. That's Adair picking up his own rebound. Out top to Nadazdi. Making him, trying to make a move around uh, Downey. Does so, shot, wide of the net. And up with it comes Stu Watson. Being watched there by Nadazdi, gets the ball back to Coquitlam, Twa now. Nadazdi drops it again. The ball's he's getting a little scrambly out there. The team's gotta grab it and settle down a bit, I think. Well, they have to. Uh, I, I don't understand this because, like I say, they were passing well for a little while there, the Richmond team and the Coquitlam team, and now they're, they're lacking concentration tonight. There's Don McNeil with the ball now, 15 seconds on the 30. Back out to Milani, looking for a shot. Being watched there by Hamilton, saved by Bill Thomas. Hamilton comes up with the ball. No, he didn't. It went over to Milani, passed it back out. Lamond, way out top to, to uh, McNeil. And Callison now with it. Lamond again, being watched there. Nadazdi getting his stick on him. Buck back, Callison with a shot, saved by Bill Thomas, down on his knees again. Good quickness on that one, and like you say, Thomas is going down to his knees quite a bit tonight. 
Uh, Richmond was doing a lot of bounce shots in the first period, and maybe uh, he thinks it's the first period or something because he's going down, like you say, quite a bit. Bernardo with the ball being watched by two outlaws. Now they're off of him, and the ball from two on one now. That's Milani and Eric, Keith Callison. Oh, oh. The Callison couldn't quite come up with the ball. I'm temp still tempted to call him Eric Callison after his brother in New West, but uh, this is the younger version. Let's see. Back out to Lamont. Dorman working hard to try to get that ball back after that uh, miscue. Some appreciation from the Richmond fans on good hustle getting the ball back, but they've only got eight seconds to work with here. Oh, the ball's intercepted there by Brunero. Wasn't a very good toss made by Darcy Phillips. And Dorman's coming down on a two-on-one with Dalzell. Shot saved by Dallas Eliak. Yeah, well, we got just over five minutes left now in the third period. He had, still. Designs. he had designs on taking that whole shot himself anyway. I don't think he even looked over on the other side. Five minutes left in the third, and it's still the Richmond Outlaws seven. Coquitlam Adnack six, saved there by Thomas. And you're watching on Rich Richmond Cable 10. Ball goes loose in the corner, as does uh, John Swan stick. And up with it comes Dalzell. Quitlam's got to set something out. I think they'd like to get a goal back now rather than having to wait until the last couple of minutes. It seems like they're keeping one man up there, uh, letting the four guys in the defensive zone, and they're leaving one guy way up before they even have the ball. So they're looking for a quick break, possibly. Dazdy being worked over a bit there by Driga. Gets through, gets and takes a hammer on his helmet, looks around for the referee to maybe call something. But I think Driga got a piece of the stick as well when he hit the helmet. So Well, it's going to have to be a good penalty now uh, this, uh, this late in the game. As both teams are getting away with a few things, but uh, like I say, it's been a clean lacrosse game tonight. Uh, uh, passing and good stick work. Henry taking the ball from Robertson, now passing it back up to Downey. Eight seconds on the 30. They don't have much time to work with. Passing it in behind the net. That's Gillis. Didn't see if they got a shot off there, but I don't think they did. Nope, they're out of time. Nope. Ball's the 30 second is called. The referee says that the 30 second clock sounded before the shot on goal, so. Whitlam's going to get the ball. A little bit of disputing from the Richmond bench. That oh, was a good call by uh, Dan Mattinson. Yeah. I think the good thing the cameras weren't looking over that way there is he uh, let Don Leach know what he thought of the call. Ball goes over to Twa now, taking it from Dalzell. Knocked away there by Mike Gillis. Good defensive work. Twa with 12 seconds to work with here. That's number 20, Bernero. Back on top, Dalzell shot. Bounce shot saved easily by Eliak. He was down on his knees too. Both goalkeepers going to their knees to save these bounce shots. Bernero had a chance to put it in there, and uh, Watson come across and hit it just in the nick of time. Bernero passing it off to Headland. Headland, nice, no, a nice goal there by Gurney. Top corner, shot it as soon as the ball was in his stick. In fact, he was probably moving his stick forward as the ball was getting there. Nice little play by Kukul. And started by Bernero, who ended up on his rear end. But it was a nice goal. And this game's starting to shape up to a really exciting finish. You might even see another overtime game as last telecast went. That goal comes at 16.48 of the third period. Goal scored by number 25, his second of the night, Troy Gurney. Assist to number 20, Paulo Brunoro. And number 10, Jody Trois. Time of the goal, 16.48. I don't know if you could hear it there, but the Troy Gurney fans, uh, fan club is going nuts up there in the Coquitlam section. Uh, yes. One of the ladies is getting pretty ecstatic, but Coquitlam's right back in this one now, tied at seven. Just under three minutes left to go in the third period. Really, into number two, that's Ray Hamilton. A little bit of interference in front of the net there, but the Coquitlam had the ball anyway, so it plays on. Ball went loose just as he was being hit there, the Coquitlam player Bobby Klein, and up with it comes number 11, Keith Callison. Callison, uh... Made a nice little hit on Klein there and got the ball and Klein come back with a quick stick. But shot, get him. shot by McNeil went wide of the net there. They got a reset on the 30 somehow. I didn't really think there was a shot on goal there, but uh, the 30 second timekeepers are giving it to him. And bringing it back up for Quitlam now is really looking for somebody there. Dalzell was open, but he couldn't quite get it through there. And Hedlund's got the ball now. Giving it to Trois. Really running off the floor, taking a rest, and back on comes Gurney. Maybe out here to look for his third goal. He's got the ball now, taking it from uh, Bernero. Shot, wide of the net. Oh, a nice little try there by Headland off after the shot, trying to just tap it into the net. Couldn't quite get it, and the ball goes to Richmond. I don't know if one thing Whitlam's doing tonight is that they're sending two men into the middle, and 
whoever's open gets the ball, simply as that, you know. And it's working for him a few times here. Davidson with the ball now for the Outlaws, passing it across, that's Hurd. In behind the net, that's John Swan. Can't miss the face mask. Ball goes way back down the floor, and uh, Dallas Iliak is gonna pick up the ball. They got 10 seconds left to go here. Well, they're coming down to the crunch now. Davids takes a shot, it goes off the goalkeeper, so Richmond's gonna get a new 30 if they can get the ball. They gotta get it first though, Dalzell's fighting for it. He's fighting for it with Russ Hurd. Ball's still loose, and up with it comes Headland. but good work there, and Hurd picks it up. He's tripped up there, but there's no penalty called. Play goes on, and Headland comes up with it. Passes it up to Gurney. Gurney looking long. That's there, and we're into the last minute of play now in this third period. Twash, the shot, Elia goes down on his knees to turn it aside. Cowie with the ball now. They got a new 30 to work with. Adazdi being watched there by Swan. Oh, a good chop there by Jeriga. I think he got a lot of helmet with that one, but play goes on. They're not going to call anything now. Adazdi passes it off. Adair. Nothing much going on in front of the net. Players standing around a bit too much. You can't give it off to anybody. And Elliot comes up with a save on the long shot by Adair. Well, they got 29 seconds and, and 28 seconds on the shot clock. So, well, the shot clock and the time out. clock are in sync. There's 22 seconds left to go, and Richmond might play for the last shot here. Gillis passing it off. That's Stu Watson. Henry being watched by Nadazdi again with that stick going. Shot on the goal there. John Swan. Oh, a beautiful pass across from Brad Henry. Threaded the needle with 10 seconds left. The Richmond Outlaws are ahead. Eight to seven over the Coquitlam Adnax. Well, like I say, they've showed that play tonight where they've moved to the low man on the, the low post, and it's worked for them three times, and three times they've had a goal from it. I think somebody's going to be calling a 30-second timeout, and it's called by the Richmond Outlaws with 10 seconds left to go in this third period. Want to set it up and make sure that they don't get caught here. There's a very nice goal there by John Swan. Beautiful pass across from Brad Henry. I feel kind of sorry for Mr. Thomas now. He's played well, but... Number eight, John Swan. Assist to number two, Darcy Phillips. And number 12, Brad Henry. Time of the goal, 19.50. Well, John Swan's had himself a good game as well for Richmond. He's got uh, one goal and one, two, three, three assists that I've got here. So yeah, uh, you can't argue with that. No, you get that sort of production out of your uh, captain and your main man you can't be too disheartened the other prominent player one who they're expecting it from this year of course is brad henry he's got two goals and an assist and he's played well as well yeah there's been some uh fine performances out of uh, the richmond team tonight and then also the kukwetlam team like save i feel that both these teams are fairly matched and i think whoever gets the best break is uh gonna win the games between them a little bit of uh mind games are going on by the coaches. I think uh, Al Luthwaite was looking for a way Richmond was going to set up off that face-off and now he's called a timeout for Quitlam. The other player I think, we, you know, we shouldn't neglect the defense as far as the outlaws go and I think Troy Pelzer's played himself a good game back on defense. Yeah, he's been fairly solid back there and he's uh, showed showed why that he, you know, he's was a prominent player in juniors and he's coming up to senior ranks and he's playing well tonight. Also the defense has played well for Richmond tonight. They've been able to keep that Coquitlam team from really penetrating the front of the goal. Only the few times that uh, they've gotten those passes in there. Uh, Gurney, uh, I'm thinking of one. They've they've been able to do well, but Richmond has stopped them fairly well. Of course, they've come back from, uh, they were down 4-1 after the first period, and they were tied for a piece after two periods, so they've uh, done well to be ahead. 8-7 here with 10 seconds left to go. Most of the players are down the floor, just two centers plus one Coquitlam player at the faceoff, hoping I guess and so he does really tosses it back towards Gurney but uh, knocked away there by Swan they got four seconds left I don't think they're going to be able to do it Dorman with a shot saved by Ulyak that's the game there it goes Richmond Outlaws get their first home victory of the 1986 season to make their record two and four in the Western Lacrosse Association well played game except for that first dismal period for the Outlaws Eight stops by Thomas. Elliak made 13 saves. Both goalkeepers playing fairly well in an 8-7 game. Just do a quick wrap-up on the scoring in the third period. Richmond goals were from 
Stu Watson. Also adding goals were Dan Lamond, Brian Jeriga, and John Swan. Here's the three-star selection. Number 12, Brad Henry. That's a good choice. Next, from the Richmond Outlaws, number 35, Dallas Elliott. And you have to agree with that one as well. Definitely. Next, from the Coquitlam Admiral, number 20, Paulo Brunero. And no arguments on the third star either. Paulo Brunero coming up with a good game for the Coquitlam Adnacks. The Coquitlam Thank you very goals much in, the, in the third evening. period like were scored by Paulo Brunero, Rob Dalzell, and also by Troy Gurney. The final score was 8-7. to seven. It was an excellent game, Lance. We can't argue with it at all. Well, we've seen some exciting play out of the... Uh, Outlaws this year, and, and especially in our first telecast when they played well, and tonight they showed some speed after that uh, first period, and they came back with the second and third and showed showed why they uh, they're a good young squad, uh, and you know Madison's got them playing the way he likes to see them play. Again, two and four is not that bad a record really this early in the WLA season because it is a very tight league. I think there's probably only two or four points separating first and fifth place which the Outlaws are occupying for now, but hopefully they'll be moving up in the near future. They have been close in every game so far, as I said, you know, last week uh, against the Berards, and actually probably that one was the only one I've seen them kind of lose it at the end of the third, uh, but every other game they've, they've showed some good talent. Yeah, again, the final score here at the Richmond Arena, Richmond Cable 10, the Richmond Outlaws 8, the Coquitlam Adnax 7, it's been uh, a pleasure doing it again with you, Lance, and we'll see you hopefully in the next couple of weeks. This has been the second home game for the Richmond Outlaws in the 1986 season, and they came away with two points. And they definitely do deserve them. As long as I don't make any more bad jokes, I think things will go well this year for the Outlaws and for us. Once again, have a good evening, and we'll see you soon.